So let's talk a little bit about this hunt now that, that Jeff is back with us. Um, sure. We can keep this fairly short. Um, I would like to know a couple of things. Sure. First off, and I'm going to make you answer this, or one of you okay. answer this. What are you hunting? Ooh, what's a suitably pompous thing in D and D to hunt? Uh, boar, boar, and bear jump to mind. I like M. M. said bear, which I really like. What do you have a uh, do you have a preference, Jeff? Uh, no, whatever's fine. Owl okay. bear or bear sounds fine. Ooh, <laughs> let's do owl bear. Oh, perfect, <laughs> excellent, D &D. excellent. We are. This is this is a fantasy campaign. Owl bear, excellent, fantastic, wonderful. So. Again, hunts tend to assemble at the ass crack of dawn, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like breath is still visible, gathering outside the gates of Waterdeep and taking a one to one and a half hour jaunt away from the city into what surely isn't a pre-prepared hunting area, specifically for nobles who want to do this sort of thing. Um, what is what are Calder's goals? Other than hunting, what are Calder's goals with this particular um, outing? Uh, his goal is to yeah, further the House of Creed, otherwise, uh, d otherwise to uh, impress these nobles. And if I cannot make them respect me, I will make them fear me. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, so the hunt begins, as many hunts already do, or always do, with booze. Yes. Um, in fact, this is a hoity-toity enough group that I think that like they're taking bubbly wine and mixing it with juice, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of mimosa level brunch happening here. Oh sure. God. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Like and they have servants there that set up a little mini bar. <laughs> and these these folks are dressed to the nines. Um, Calder, what do you? What's your uh, what's your getup look like as you're as you're approaching? You're you're gonna come into this uh, party, which is already kind of got a little breakfast ready uh, to go. Uh, Calder's probably deviated from his uh, from the uh, art that I have most recently of the purple and the gold and the clear influence of someone else other than me designing the costume uh, in favor of probably something similar to what he has worn in uh, in dungeons past. So his like a sturdy shirt, uh, a full length cloak, a uh, some uh, he has learned his lesson and wears thick and wears thicker, more purpose ready boots. <laughs> and uh, uh, otherwise, he looks almost pretty, he almost looks drab by comparison. As you approach, the folks who notice you begin to applaud. And before too mm -hmm. long, like everyone has turned and is 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 clapping. And one of the nobles comes up to you and says, "You are Calder Creed, yes." That is my that is my name, yes. I won one hundred gold pieces off of you, my friend. Excellent show. Excellent show. <laughs> that red uh, without, wizard, I thought he had you for a moment there. At last I checked with last I checked, red wizards were still susceptible to the old spell of sword and heart, but <laughs> Yes, of course, of course. Come, let me introduce you around. And he'll go ahead. Oh, yeah, so he'll just like he's like, oh boy, this part. <laughs> and it's like takes a deep breath and then puts on a big dazzling smile, putting making the but not only is he happy to be here, he is ecstatic to be here among such wonderful and such clearly noble and dignified spirits. That sounds so much like a deception check, unless you want to yeah. go straight to fear me, at which point it would be an intimidation check. Uh uh uh, deception seems fine. Excellent. Give it a shot. Um, we have a thing on this, yeah? Do we have another plus uh, yeah, two? Yeah, it's an ad advantage. Advantage? Roll oh. it again. Or just take a plus one. <laughs> or you can take a plus five. Oh, beautiful. Hey. Beautiful. I'll take the, uh, I'll take the advantage. Oh, you the are advantage so glad to be here. You are you just... are so happy to be here. Everybody knows it. And immediately you are the center of attention as mm -hmm. as folks beg you to tell them the story as it happened from the arena. Many of them were not able to make it and see the match firsthand, that's, but they that, heard tales. Uh, then that's definitely the deception check where I am saying, keeping it 
real enough, but like grant, but like overplaying, uh, like exaggerating the, the threat, overplaying uh, my part, overplaying the like the various pieces in effect, and like when he when he call uh, it will tell the entire story from point to finish, but will deliberately augment details uh, to to make the threat seem that much harder to overcome. They like, are not, enthralled. Not, not not strictly lying, but anyone who is actually there, like, could tell this was an exaggeration. But it's for effect. Oh yeah, they are they are enthralled. They love this story, and they ask questions and like make you back up and say certain things again or describe something a little bit differently. And like, oh, but what if? But but what if you had like kind of thing? And then mm -hmm. eventually, like a couple of them start talking about about tactical like configurations and how they would have approached this fight and like it dominates the conversation until the hunt itself uh, begins if, if it is someone if it is any of the people i do not i have displayed a dislike to if like if that uh if uh what's his name uh what did, what name did we give uh that Chuck he is Mark? not present even he okay. was the one that initially Ashcroft. invited you ashcroft. ashcroft yes he was the one that initially invited you on this hunt he is is uh and not present conspicuously absent interesting uh so uh after that i uh he so he'll like he'll uh make sure like but like the the grandiose uh the 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 culmination the the falling of the demons uh it's like i have no idea how many there were they just seem to be everywhere like deliberately not pinning a number down oh i heard there were dozens i heard there were hundreds not a hundred that was that is clearly ridiculous <laughs> dozens at least <laughs> And did like, that is way too much of an exaggeration. However, at least forty. <laughs> <laughs> and did you see the Xanathar unleash his power? I was. I. I did, and will like. I will correctly and appropriately describe the Xanathar as the villainous monster that he is. Oh, it was. Yeah, but, that was. That was but, pretty. Pretty but terrifying. Such, but in such a way that describes him as a thing not to be fucked with. <laughs> so the hunt begins. Um, you have your own horse. Mm -hmm. So I do, in fact. I do, in fact, have my own horse. I yes, you do. I provide my own horse. Um, so they go out um, hunting, and it is a, a group of owl bears, And this is going to be kind of like a, a choose-your-own-adventure almost. Um, sure. So, so there will be a pair of owl bears that will be the, the trophy for this. Does Calder attempt to be the first one to kill it? Does Calder attempt to... Um, rescue or offer sucker to it or some other option that you would like to how is calder approaching uh, this hunt or is calder just setting back and and letting uh, others do the do the work uh, uh, calder is more or less here to be a participant just to ho just an hobnob with nobles uh however like he's still like an adventurer and he's still like, he is competitive so he'll like like egg himself forward closer to the front and uh like keep he he wants to see the owl bear first he because he wants to see it in its natural habitat he wants to see the thing uh and uh if he finds out and uh, if he found if he found out that it had cubs or if he saw it being adorable like that part of him would definitely get needled and he'd be like oh no i can't kill you or let you die <laughs> okay so here's what i need um, we're gonna mm -hmm. do a very, very quick skill challenge. Give me a perception check. Um, do okay, we have I'm any? Sure. Do we still have any bonuses, or was that it? I think that was it. I think that was it. Uh, there is another plus two. Another plus two. Excellent. So 15. you get a fifth. Perfect. You get a fifteen. Excellent. That gets you up to the next tier of success. I will say that you are the first to see um, the owl bears. There are two of them. Um, give me an insight check as you see them. Nat 20. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Lionar says, are you dealing with domesticated owl bears? They are outside of the city fighting. Well, we're about to find out because he just nailed that insight challenge. Um, you can see that these owl bears are very, very, very agitated and aggressive. Mm -hmm. Like more so than owl bears are wont to be. 
Mm-hmm. You you can you with with that in with that level of insight, you can tell that these owl bears are not naturally this aggressive, but like you see them walking around and they are like tearing bark off of trees, and uh, you're the first one to see it, and no one else has seen it yet, but the party is very close behind you. What do you do? Uh. Calder will like point at a distance, uh, like a good, like a, in the off to the side, a good distance away from this, from the owlbears, and will cast a minor illusion of the same thing he's observing, just violent roars, uh, uh, off the uh, off to the side to draw them away just for a bit. You hear the call of view, hello, as as your your illusion is spotted. And your um, your companions like, and just, veer off in another direction, like, and that will go for like sixty seconds. So, it, like, it's it's just like the roars and sounds uh, going off for sixty seconds in that direction. And after that's done, he will uh, he'll cast invisibility on himself and tr- and try to approach. Sure, like because he wants because he wants to investigate this because this seems unusual. This is like, I I have determined it is unusual. Yeah, um, so you're invisible. You approach. Um, these these owl bears are are clearly acting uh, in a in a strange fashion. Um, after a minute or so, you'll you'll notice you'll you'll hear the signal for for quarry lost. And uh, what are you looking for in particular? I'm I am looking for like signs of why they are upset, like why they are this way. Like, are they injured? Are they poisoned? Are they sick? Is there something? Is there? Are they like frothing at the mouth? Is something? something that would indicate why they are like this um yes yeah you know hunting woods you know (laughs) yeah we're gonna say like if they're chained like if they're chained that would also explain yeah they're definitely not chained but as you're sort of observing them from up close and they have no idea that you're there you definitely see wounds on them Mm. like like fresh wounds on them not anything big not anything that would for example harm a feather pelt but like there are little spots of blood here and there on their bodies Hmm. they might have been weakened for a hunting party or something (laughs) Uh, at this point, I'll upgrade. I'll actually spend a third level spell. I'm going to cast Ooh. hypnotic pattern. Excellent. Okay. Uh, On them. That will. That yeah. That will make them still and uh, and unresponsive. It works. I'm not going to bother rolling saves or anything. I don't uh, think a hypnotic then... pattern has a save, does it? It does. It's a will uh, save. Oh, it does. Yeah. I'm not going to. Uh, they they will automatically fail the will save. Uh, and I will approach. Uh, with them, like, suitably, like, with them, uh, suitably, uh, <laughs> pacified, I'll, I'll walk directly up to them and, uh, and examine the injury. Yeah, uh, they are, they are definitely, like, like, looking at something else. Um, it looks, so, so what you find look like puncture wounds. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna need a medicine check. That's a weird one for you, but let's give it a shot. Okay. This is worth (laughs) another spell point. Okay, go for it. Eh, 10. I'll take it. You know that... So, so this is going to be partially your your knowledge of, of how nobles interact. You know that there are sometimes hunts where an animal is given some kind of drug or not necessarily a poison, but some kind of drug to make them agitated. This looks like that kind of thing. It it looks like it looks like something was delivered through. And now that you're looking at it, um, even with a 10, I will say you do, in fact, find one of the darts in its feathers. Like, I'll find, like, a dart that was used to inject something. Yes. Well, that's just unsportsmanlike. <sighs> I, like, I, I will give a the most bored sigh. 
uh, and uh, I and we'll, because I only have them for like a minute. Because yeah. Of how long it, the so my lasts. my my question now, and we're gonna we're gonna hand wave through most of it because I want to move on. What? How does Calder attempt to resolve this situation? You've got this hunt happening. Mm-hmm. You you have sent them off in another direction for a moment. You've mm-hmm. got the quarry right here. What does Calder do? Uh, Calder will uh, uh, will claim. Uh, he'll like reach up and like use a dagger if he if necessary because he wants to just remove like one of the larger feathers off of each uh, off, off of each of them within the time that he has. Yeah. Uh, and then he will like walk up a hill and then uh, recast invisibility as uh, as the hypnotic pattern goes away. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, and then they, spend, they didn't like, even know you were there. And th- and then he'll spend like and then he'll like make a game of it. He'll spend the rest of the hunt just uh, stalking the hunting party and like flinging uh, and just send them on a wild goose chase uh, with with illusions chasing down. Uh, like they'll see it. They'll see a an albear uh, in the brush. They'll give chase. They'll hear its roar and sound away. And I'll just like fuck with the hunting party and just have them like and, and basically lead them in the opposite direction of where where the owlbears are agitated. So at the end of the hunt, because Calder will have more or less vanished from the hunt at this point, but people get separated. It happens. What story does he tell the rest of the party when they come back empty handed? Uh, when they come back empty handed, Calder will uh, will deliberately arrive a little later uh and will uh when and when everyone is like muttering about the failure of their hunt he will pull out the the, pl- the plume feathers uh, everyone and, all uh, the conversation stops uh and he'll he'll describe how uh he found uh the majestic creatures uh away uh, one he found uh the uh the majestic creatures a ways away and uh that the that they were uh, placid, docile, not a threat to anyone, and so there wasn't really a point in hurting such creatures that were helpless before him. He didn't see it sporting it. There, there was no challenge. So he, like, he admired their strength and just got a, and then, like, he'll make up bu- a bullshit story about uh, get, about just getting close enough to pluck a feather out, uh, out of them uh, uh, using his invisibility and then walked away. Give me a raw charisma check. Take advantage on it. Um, actually, take this, advantage and plus five on it because Lionar redeemed uh, a, an advantage. Can I use a deception on that? Because I am lying my ass off. Yes. Yes. Take a plus five and advantage on this deception. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll you'll drop the one, will you? This is the first 30 we have rolled, I think, this campaign. I think. Yeah, so, I think so. I'm yeah. going to say... Damn. I am going to say that everyone is incredibly impressed, not only by your power and your stealth, but also by your mercy. (laughs) And you are just the talk of the entire hunt Uh, for the rest of the time. One thing I am doing while I'm telling the story about these utterly placid, calm, peaceful creatures is I'm looking for anyone who seems uh, who seems confused or uh, who seems confused or otherwise bewildered by that by that statement. Because uh, you, I'm looking for a clue of who dosed these things. Absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, I don't have names available at the moment, but yes, but, there are there are definitely some folks that either look uncomfortable or frustrated. Um, mm-hmm. But most of the hunting party is like, "Holy shit, Calder is the greatest hunter of all time." Um, uh, I am. At, Go ahead. At the end of the hunt, he will. I'll, I'll, I'll call them out by name, and I, it's, I have a question. If you don't mind me, uh, pull, I'll pull them aside. Uh, and then I will like shove the dart, a dart against his chest, uh, against their chest. Look him dead in the eye and go. Next time you want some glory, go out and fucking earn it. <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end that. And then I'll just I'll leave them with the dart in hand as I walk away, like with just the palpable disgust on my on my voice. Calder, you will be raised to two ranks. Uh, of in fact, I think with that performance, I'm going to say you're raised to to three ranks of of reputation within the House of Lords. Your your story from today, in addition to your story from the arena, will travel a, a long and far amongst the noble families. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs>
And that that's fade to black, right? Or is it like yeah, a that's, that's that's a cut, god damn it. <laughs> that's a cut. That's great. Okay. So we have a couple of things. Um, but I want to take a break. Um, we're gonna do Echo's um meeting with the Emerald Enclave. Then the team will be leaving Waterdeep. And more or less immediately after that, we will be meeting M's new character. So stick around. We're going to take a 10 minute break. It is currently 7.41 p.m. Pacific time. We will go ahead and take a break until 7.52 p.m. Pacific time, at which point we will come back. We will do some more role playing. We will do some more dungeons. We will do some more dragons. Maybe not those things today, but in general. And uh, I hope you stick around. Uh, there's also going to be an art montage in the middle of the break. So please stick around for that as well. A star wipe. No, star wipe. The best wipe. Star wipe. <laughs> Take care, folks. Be back in just a few minutes.